Hi guys, how are you doing? Welcome to another position of the week. This time it's a position of the week a year ago. This game was played on the 9th of December 2020 in the Russian Championship Super Final. So the white, with the white pieces we have uh, Daniel Dubov and with the black pieces we have Vladislav Artemiev. And the reason why I do a game from a year ago is because I want to advertise a Christmas camp we are having here at the very end of 2021 and the very beginning of 2022. It starts on the 22nd December and it finishes on the 2nd of January. And uh, by the time this video is up, we'll have more details about it on the website. So it's a 12 day camp, about four hours of chess training every day. And the camp is called the 12 days of bloody Christmas. And some of you will think, well, I actually participated in the 12th day of bloody Christmas last year and possibly you did. Um, so we had this camp last year as well and we decided to do it again. So it is about attacking chess and it is like last year based first on one hour of, uh, of general training with, with the academy and then afterwards uh, there will be three hours of in-depth training for people who are uh, purchasing the camp, the in-depth camp. Um, the rules, the basic rules of attacking chess will not have changed uh, in the last 12 months, just like they hadn't changed in the previous decade or before that any uh, as well. Um, however, the examples we use will be entirely different. We, we're not going to go over the same uh, examples. Uh, so if you participated uh, previously last year in, in the camp, there is not really any reason not to participate this time. On the other hand, if you didn't participate last time, there's also no reason not to participate this time because uh, some of the ideas may be new to you on top of the examples being new. Uh, so this example we looked at last year and uh, it was sort of one of the highlights for me. So first, let me show you what uh, happened in the game and then uh, you can return to the example or, and think or you can stop the video and think now. So at this point here, white played bishop g5 and the game continued like this. I'm just going to show you the moves. They're sort of like uh, best option for black was, uh, was probably everything he played um, here and Knight e3, and here also d4 was interesting, but but he took here, which was fine. Here and here, he uh, Artemiev made a, a mistake, and the game ended in a draw almost immediately. Uh, this was played, and then it was a perpetual check, like this, and the game was drawn. Um, but in this position here, I can just flip the board for you. Um, you could also stop and think here for a moment uh, how black can win the game and there's sort of more than the one way if you start in the right direction um, but I'm just gonna give you the the main line of the win here uh, which is a d4 it's a very natural aggressive move it opens off the bishop attacking on the dark squares then it takes check here and here knight c6 also wins uh, my main line goes like this queen a3 check and if, if king b1, then bishop a2 is made, so must play uh, king d2. And then take with the pawn, and, and then there are threats like uh, queen c3, and taking an e3, and, and various things. Um, bishop b5 check doesn't work. There's a, there's a nice little line here. If, if knight c4, then queen c3 is made in two, so bishop b5 is probably the best try, but here black has knight c6, and now the, the queen either has to be lost or move somewhere and if it moves somewhere there's checkmate here okay so let's get back to the position we were originally looking at after black's 13th move which i think was d5 and it was so in this position here um we we were looking at this game it, uh, like two weeks after it was played but essentially hadn't really analyzed it that deeply i just had it in my list of games I wanted to look at and I wanted to explain a few things. And 
once we're analyzing these games together and we're sort of working them out together, um, we're not just looking at the engine says, oh, engine says this, engine says this. No, we're using our uh, knowledge, our ideas, our uh, imagination, and the principles of attacking chess to find the best move. So the two main principles are momentum, which means that everything has to happen with as, as great speed as possible. Um, and this is as possible is always the, the thing that makes it complicated because sometimes you're using too much speed and you lose control, but other times you have too much control and you lose speed in the attack. So this is one of the, the great, um, great difficulties when attacking. And the other one is you should include all the pieces whenever possible. So again, whenever possible is not necessarily so easy to determine. Uh, but in this position, by by uh, these principles, which are always, I want to underline this, principles are always a starting point for thinking. They're never a replacement of thinking. Um, but by these principles, there's a move we simply have to look at, which is rook h1. Put all the pieces in the middle, especially when black hasn't developed. Um, so the first thing you would, would ask in this position is, should black not win a piece? And reality is that here, these kind of really aggressive things with, with e5 and, and trying to give up a queen and, you know, it looks like, oh, we're coming with this great mate. Um, it's just too expensive. Now here, if, if black plays bishop b7, we take on g7, like say here and here, and it is indeed uh, a checkmate. And it's very pretty, but the problem in this position is that uh, black can give up the queen and then there's simply no attack. You invested too many pieces. Um, but here after d4, bishop takes, pawn takes, and knight takes. Um, black's lack of development is a huge problem. Let's say we play bishop e7 trying to castle, e5. So here black can either choose to castle and white will take an f6 and be a pawn up. And that's, of course, a way for the attack to start, uh, to stop, uh, or to prevent White's attack from stopping, is giving material up and then run away and, and have, have less pieces. But White has good winning chances. And if Black tries to keep the piece, then constantly come these threats. And he doesn't have this free move to, uh, to castle. And, for example, after knight b6, bishop f7 check, e6 check, queen f4 check to avoid the exchange of queens, and knight takes e checks. Here that's going to follow uh, many threats like rook d6 and knight g5 and, and various ideas, and white's attack is rather overwhelming. Um, so if we go back to after d5, rook hg1 here, then here black's uh, strongest move is actually queen a5. And the position is still very dangerous for white. Uh, there's uh, uh, some threats of a, a check on, on a2 and, and a general uh, disruptions on the queen side as well. Black threatening to just take on, on f5 and play bishop d6 and have a complete development. So white has to play very energetically. And now we follow another uh, key idea of attacking chess, which is that... Uh, when you are uh, ready, all the pieces are ready, you have to act. This is uh, famously Steinitz rule, which is uh, if you have an advantage, you must attack or you lose the advantage. Because in the 19th century, the only type of advantage, especially for Steinitz, uh, who was a very aggressive player, that made sense was uh, uh, to attack the king. So in this position here, if you think of that, you can think, what is the most aggressive move white can play here? Um, so we cannot take on d5 because bishop f5. Uh, I remember in the class people suggested bishop f3 and f3 and so on. But these kind of things, black take on f5, play bishop b7. And the, the main positional problems with the open king over here will never go away, but the black king will go away in castle. So this point here, white has to find quite a, rather an inventive move to get things going, which is bishop c4. Now, uh, the idea are, ideas here are twofold. One of them is to uh, to take on d5, and 
but generally it's just giving up a piece to open the position. If black takes immediately, uh, here then after check, take, and queen d6, black won't be able to castle. And there are some various lines here. Bishop b6 is a, is a threat. If knight c6 comes, then knight d5. And here this position is actually playable for black because you can hear castle and, and there's counterplay. I don't know who's better here. Uh, it's by no means obvious. Uh, white has won a pawn, but his king is still a bit more exposed. Probably would prefer to play white, but it's not a very easy, uh, uh, easy choice here. Um, but the most natural move after bishop c4 is bishop takes f5 and takes. And if white is allowed, he will play bishop b3. The bishop will be fantastic defending the king and everything. So black should take it. And now white has to play very energetically again. Uh, unfortunately, bishop b6 and take here and doppling doesn't work because we invested too many pieces. And after castling, we don't get enough dividend. So here, black has to play uh, bishop f4. Now, if e4, we play rook takes e4 because there's mate on d7. And if, um, if knight c6, we take again. And then here we, we have to think. And it's, it's possible to pull, both play f4 and queen d4 here. Uh, my main line is queen d4, bishop b7 takes here and now it's important to throw in this intermediate move and here black can castle and the position is balanced or we can have a position like this which is entirely unbalanced black is a, a piece up but his pieces are not playing um, I don't know what the result will be here it's, it's a very very complicated position and uh, certainly would have given uh, Dubov uh, a better position than, than what he did in the game. Okay, so this was a quite a complicated example, but hopefully it was also very inspiring. Um, if you think I went very, very fast over it, I did. It was with the understanding that you understand how to push the space bar and, and stop here and there. Uh, I can promise you I cannot keep this uh, speed going for 50 hours, uh, which is sort of what the camp will, will be. Um, but I also wouldn't want to. We take it slowly, we think, and uh, uh, we take it uh, one moment at a time. And there will be exercises, there will be playing positions. You'll be able to submit your own games and get feedback in a class setting, of course, uh, and there will be uh, ample of time for questions, answers, and uh, very good explanations of the principle of principles of attacking chess. So you don't just understand it theoretically, but you have a real feeling of how to use them in your own games forward. Okay, it's been another position of the week. Um, I'm Grandmaster Yabuoko. I will see you for the next position of the week, perhaps. Or maybe I will see you at the Christmas camp. Or otherwise, you're generally welcome to visit us at, at here, killerchesstraining.com. Uh, we are a nice academy. If you want to get better at chess and spend your time with, uh, with nice people, um, you really cannot get... Uh, get wrong by by joining us. Thank you very much guys